my name is Evgeny Bifanovsky, and I am the technical program manager um, on the application team at INQ. Very similar to Lundin and Miguel, my uh, research background is in computational chemistry. Uh, in my uh, career, I've done uh, quantum chemistry and molecular mechanics, molecular dynamics simulations, uh, mostly on the computational side and algorithm development. Over the past uh, probably 10 plus years, I've helped research teams work on their research projects, uh, especially those related to method and algorithm development. And so I'm very excited about this opportunity to work with SKKU uh, students, postdocs, and research staff, as, as well as um, uh, those uh, from other universities in Korea on uh, research projects. I'm not going to impose any particular topic. I'm open to a variety. Uh, uh, however, uh, if you work with me, the, the point will be on um, executing on the goals for the project, choosing the right experimental sets, uh, testing hypotheses uh, related to, to your new algorithm development. I'm very excited about working with you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Miguel Lopez. Um, I've been here at IUNQ for almost uh, seven months now. Uh, my, uh, I'm, at the, I'm a senior scientist at the applications team, and I have a background in nuclear physics, but after that, I did a postdoc in applications of quantum computing to, uh, to quantum chemistry. So the uh, topic that I'm proposing for our projects uh, today is tensor networks. So what are tensor networks? Well, we could call them as uh, tensor decomposition methods that allows us to uh, describe a really high order tensors into simple operations of low order tensors. And by tensors, we just mean uh, high dimensional arrays of numbers. So a one order tensor is a vector, two order tensor a matrix, uh, six order tensor will be you know, an element that has six indices. Um, so by uh, contracting uh, multiple tensors, uh, uh, we can form these uh, tensor networks in different topologies. So I'm showing here three examples, uh, you know, uh, as a linear connection in a, like a two-dimensional network or something a little bit more complicated that is called a tree tensor network. So why do we care about uh, tensor networks? Well, they have multiple applications. So first for machine learning, uh, they have been used for uh, supervised and uh, unsupervised uh, learning. So you can describe, let's say, your uh, uh, weight tensor into a, uh, a simplified tensor network that it's easier to handle. Um, so with this techniques, you can do image compression, uh, image classification, or generative learning. Uh, they're also used as the starting point of many quantum machine learning algorithms. So here I'm showing an example of how a tensor network can be written uh, as a quantum circuit uh, for an image classification uh, problem that uh, one of our colleagues here uh, worked on uh, very recently. Now they also have an application for quantum chemistry because uh, they are basically developed as efficient representation of many body quantum states. So a, as you might know, the, a quantum state, uh, uh, it's written as a very large uh, tensor of complex coefficients. So the number of coefficients basically scales exponentially with the number of uh, particles that you have. So if you have a very uh, a nice uh, or an easy representation of that uh, coefficient tensor, then you can actually uh, manipulate and, and do stuff with the, with those quantum states. Uh, they have been studied for a while. So there's this uh, very famous algorithm called DMRG that computes uh, ground states um, for many body Hamiltonians. And the, uh, the basis of that uh, uh, algorithm is a tensor network uh, you know, starting point. Also for quantum dynamics, the state of the art method is MCTDH and okay. some of the ansatz that uh, you can use for that method is also uh, types of tensor networks. So they're, they're very powerful uh, methods here. Uh, and 
Finally, uh, for quantum computing, well, it turns out that there's like a one-on-one -on -one correspondence between tensor networks and quantum circuits, which means that any quantum circuit can be uh, expressed as a tensor network and vice versa. Uh, this means that they are excellent to uh, for quantum circuit simulations. Um, and of course, there's, you know, up onto some point that we can do this. And that's how we show this in this graph that uh, we have some interplay between circuit depth and number of qubits. And below this curve, you know, there's where uh, we can always simulate um, quantum circuits with tensor networks that uh, as we increase circuit depth and number of qubits, then that's where we need to use uh, our quantum hardware to you know actually run these simulators, but uh, using this uh, in conjunction with uh, actually a, 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 a quantum computer, then uh, we can build these hybrid algorithms and maybe do something very interesting with that. So uh, yeah, so then that's my proposal to work with uh, tensor networks. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Lu Ning Zhao and I'm an uh, res application researcher at IonQ working in the application team. My background is uh, mainly in quantum chemistry. Uh, I did my PhD and postdoc working on developing uh, new algorithms for quantum chemistry, electronic structure theory and quantum dynamics. And here at IonQ, I mainly work on uh, developing quantum algorithms for quantum chemistry problems and help our customers for to explore early use case of quantum computers. Here today, I'm going to propose this idea of a variational quantum neural hybrid eigensolver. And uh, here is the overview of the quantum uh, variational quantum eigensolver, which you find here uh, a workflow for VQE. The goal of VQE is trying to find a parameterized quantum circuit that minimizes this energy in which you have a quantum circuit, uh, wave function psi, and theta will be the parameters of these of the quantum circuit. By minimizing this uh, energy functional, you will be able to find the approximation to the ground state uh, of this particular Hamiltonian, and it could be a molecular Hamiltonian. And what variational quantum eigensolver does is that it measures this uh, energy functional on the quantum computer and minimizes on the classical computer. Here, the workflow shows that you uh, pre prepare your slide, uh, your uh, your quantum state, and you measure different parts of the energy, and you uh, accumulate accumulate them on the classical computer, and you optimize it, and then uh, by uh, finding a new set of parameters that reduces the energy, and you're going uh, uh, this process done iteratively until convergence. Uh, but on NISC systems, this uh, variational quantum eigensolver doesn't work that well because of system noise. Here is an example that shows uh, the bound disassociation potential energy surface for lithium hydride molecule. You see that comparing with this exact solution, which is a dot a dashed green line, the, quant the measurement energy on the quantum computer, which is shown by this uh, black dot, are above the exact solution and that also have some unphysical behaviors like this hump. So it's, uh, the energy is noisy on NISC systems. The variational uh, quantum neural hybrid eigensolver trying to mitigate uh, the errors of the hardware by adding a diff a, a additional layer to the variational quantum eigensolver. And this layer is represented by a neural network. So here is the, uh, the, K, uh, the workflow for that. So you still measure a quantum system, uh, a parameterized quantum, uh, uh, quantum state on the quantum computer. But then after you do the measurement, instead of directly using this measurement to compute energy, you first use this measurement as an input to a neural network. And instead of, uh, instead of measuring the energy directly on the quantum computer, the neural network is going to output the energy. And now the, you have two set of parameters. Uh, first is the set of parameters of your quantum circuit. And the second set of parameters will be the neural network parameters. And by optimizing these two set of parameters together, the neural network will be able, be able to pick out the errors on the quantum computer and suppress those errors. So here is some, uh, and this all, it's all based on this paper published in PRL in 2022. And there have uh, shown some uh, like very impressive results. 
here they're comparing uh, uh, VQE and VQNHE with the uh, neural network with the exact result for these Heisenberg models. And they show that uh, uh, with the neural network, you will get much better energies compared with just raw VQE. And running it on the hardware and, noise, and noisy simulators, you find that uh, adding a neural network dramatically reduces the amount of errors that you see uh, uh, that you see on hardware. Yeah. So in this proposal, I propose that we uh, work through this paper and then trying to implement this, this algorithm, investigating to different choices of the uh, of the neural network, such as uh, activation functions, the architectures of the neural network, and see how uh, they affect the results and how they perform in terms of error suppression for noisy. Uh, uh, for running these uh, BQE uh, simulations on noisy systems. Yeah, that's it.